And as a fitness professional that's been doing this for a long time, I can tell you the best days for your growth are the days after you fail. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. I'm Dr. Michael Haley, and you're listening to the Dr. Haley Show podcast. If you've been putting off getting back in shape, get ready to be inspired. Get ready to hit the reset button on your fitness routine. Today's guest is Chad Austin. Chad is owner of Priority Fitness in Overland Park, Kansas. He authored the book series, Make Fitness a Priority. He is an expert and popular guest on all kinds of fitness shows. Thank you for joining me here, Chad. And I love the name of your business and your book series, the Priority Fitness. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and I'm had <laughs> uh, definitely came along. It came along with my book series, Make Fitness a Priority. So it was kind of named after that, I think. Well, you know, there's two important words there. And, you know, I think right now, for most people, probably the emphasis is on the word priority. And that's important. But let's talk about fitness first. Because okay. I think this is a, a neglected term. I mean, what does it mean to you? And when did it become important? Well, you know, I think that's one of those words or one of those questions like, what does fitness mean to you? I think that's one of those things that uh, everyone has their own answer, right? I've been asked that before on on a podcast and it seems like that's such an easy question, but it's like, it's really one of those, you can't answer for everybody else. You can only answer for yourself. And it actually changes as you go through time too. So my business right now is kind of an evolution of how I've grown as a fitness professional as I've gotten older. So I've been in fitness for about 20 years now. I'm a personal trainer and an author in Kansas City. And when I first got started, it was definitely, you know, helping people reach their goals that help them come in the door, which we know are normally short term. Everyone starts with uh, short term motivation. They're fueled by short term motivation. There's something coming up in their lives that they want results for. Uh, But we know that kind of motivation only leads to temporary success. And so as I evolved as a trainer, I, I went to make fitness a priority. And so that was my book series. And it was all about helping people get long-term success. So it stuck around. Uh, and then I kind of realized that even though everyone was doing better my, with this new approach, people were still falling off track. And so you realize that really it's life's unexpected changes and life's curveballs that cause us to throw off track, to, to fall off track with our fitness plan. And while we're really good at adapting to change when it comes to our family, our career, our faith, things like that, we're terrible at adapting to it when it comes to our health. Fitness always becomes a thing we'll get to later. We'll worry about that later. And meanwhile, you know, we're not able to show up as the best version of ourselves to what is most important to us. And so everything about me now has kind of changed towards how do we figure out how fitness fits in your life right now? And uh, that has been the most Im- impactful message I've stumbled across uh, in my career as a fitness professional. You know, I, I love that phrase that you use, the best version of ourselves. That's cool. Um, that encompasses a lot. When I think of fitness, you know, I think of all the different areas from, you know, there's strength training and there's endurance training and flexibility training and agility training and all these different things, you know, you said what's important to one person might be different than another. And I think of some of the sports that I like to watch. I love to watch basketball. I love to watch uh, gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And the fitness of both of them are going to require endurance and some degree of speed and and strength, some element of that. Uh, Basketball players aren't going to need the flexibility that a gymnast will need. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so in that area, they probably lack some emphasis on flexibility training for basketball, where it's more about endurance and making it up and down the court. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I agree with you, you know, but I wouldn't want to neglect any of those areas. How do you measure someone's fitness? Uh, well, one thing is, you know, 
when you're going through all those sports, it made me just think that one golden rule I've kind of always had is just that, you know, your training has to resemble what you're training for. So this just made me think of this, but in so many popular magazines that we used, especially growing up when we first got into fitness, uh, that, you know, muscle fitness or men's health, women's health, all the different magazines we'd look and get articles from. There's always articles about, uh, uh, the next superheroes movie or the next professional athlete that we want to see how he works out. And we judge that based on what we need for ourselves, but not thinking that's probably not what the person needs. Like for a basketball player, LeBron James has no reason to do low squats or really even squat all the way down. Cause you're never actually going to squat really in a game. It's more about jumping. And so if, if you watch his workout training program or watch him work out and he's in your think, oh, he's not going all the way down in a squat. So, well, he probably doesn't ever need to. It's not what fitness looks like for him. Or if someone's doing more balanced because they're in gymnastics. Uh, so everything's different. Everything's relative. But I think it's really, you know, assessments are important. Definitely. I, I know as I'm older now in my 40s, I want to be able to stay as fit as I was in my 20s. And so it's always going to be something I, I strive for. But things I didn't worry about uh, when I was younger, just my flexibility in my shoulders, you know, that I put off forever. You know, if I can't grab my hands behind my back or I've gotten some forward arms, um, I can't stretch all the way above my head or, or, or something. That, that's something when you're younger, you just put that off. It's not a big deal right now. I can still do everything. But as you get older, you realize, oh, it's something I should have paid attention to. And so I think flexibility, balance, all those things, it's important to keep them fine tuned. Yeah. And someone in a professional sport might neglect that because their, you know, performance in the sport, their career is more important to them. Uh, so they're focusing on other areas and they're going to have injuries and their bodies aren't going to work the same as they're aging. They sacrifice their bodies on the football field. You sacrifice your body. You do damage to your joints. Irreparable. Um, so there is some element of that. And, you know, for myself, like you, I want to last, I want to be able to mm -hmm. play sports in the next decades and, mm -hmm. and have fun in competition. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The game changed a little bit, you know, uh, pickleball's my game now, you know, I'm in my late fifties, so why not? Uh, <laughs> but we want to be able to do these things. Yeah, yeah I want to be sport. able to run, jump, crawl, all of it. Yeah, well, I'm an avid uh, obstacle racer, runner. Uh, so that's probably, if I had a sport to, to claim, that would probably be it. I've done a lot of obstacle courses and running. They're just great for my own mental health. But then also, I think it's just the way I approach everything. I think obstacle courses just relate so much to life. You know, you can exchange the words excuse and obstacle, and it's the same sentence. I mean, an obstacle is really just an excuse we haven't overcome yet. And so I yeah. think having those challenges and physically, it definitely translates over into everyday life. So if I had to claim a sport right now that I'm training for, I guess it's obstacle racing and running. But <laughs> I, I like that because that is a survival of the fittest type sport. You know, when mm -hmm. I think of fitness, uh, you know, who's going to survive? If you were being chased by a lion, who's going to mm -hmm. survive? Um, so I like that. Uh, MMA is another favorite of mine to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of survival of the fittest. Wouldn't mm -hmm. want to do it though. You know, maybe if, well, you know, I'll watch that one, not participate. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe with big gloves on, it would be fun. Are you enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera, specifically drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, Tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. So when you look at fitness, how important is diet in your personal routine? 
Uh, very, very important. And it really doesn't matter what your fitness goals are. You're going to have a tough time getting there if you don't take nutrition seriously too. It's all relative. I always say the the three pillars are mindset, nutrition, and training. I mean, nutrition, I would always say in, in my books and everything, that is the most important one. You can't outrun a bad diet. So if you're trying to lose weight and it doesn't matter how hard you work, if you don't uh, keep track of how much you're putting in your body, how much you're eating. Um, and if you're trying to gain strength, or you're trying to push your body to the limits. If you don't put the right fuel in the tank, you're not gonna be able to do it there either. But yeah. mindset definitely is always where I would start every chapter of any book I wrote. If you don't have the right mind space, um, you're going to lose before you even start too. Yeah. Um, well, tell me a little bit more about that. How do you get in the right mindset? And do you um, have any favorite books related to that? Uh, I think uh, a lot of it uh, for my clients, I think, is focusing on consistency. Um, this came up, focusing on consistency and focusing on you don't have to be perfect. And so I think a lot of fitness in my field, you know, it's all about uh, how fast you can get results and our instant gratification and all the promises out there to us that you can get results fast without even putting any much work into it. Um, the easy button easy button claims. And that's just not how it works. I mean, we have yeah. to actually be more patient to make fitness a priority in our life. And it's consistency over the long haul. You got to be able to stack consistent days until those habits become automatic. But the good news is on that, that nothing in making fitness a priority in your life uh, says you have to be perfect. And so, so many of the, of the stats and everything, whether it be new year's resolutions or, uh, just the phrase 21 days to make a habit, it's misleading because it's, it's almost like it's leading you to believe that it's 21 perfect days, 21 days without error, 21 days without mistake. And that mm -hmm. being perfect, that's really too high of a bar to ask of yourself because we're humans aren't perfect. We're not perfect. We're going to have mistakes from time to time. And as a fitness professional, it's been doing this for a long time. I can tell you the best days for your growth are the days after you fail. It's about how you get back on track um, after you make a mistake and not let it derail you and say, well, I've already messed up. I might as well just wait till next month and, or next week and then I'll start over. Um, so, I mean, I think the mentality of you don't have to be perfect and, and the journey is not going to be a straight line from, you know, the start to finish. There's going to be two steps forward, one steps back. And so tampering your expectations that it's going to be patient you're in it for a long haul and this is what you're going to gain in the long haul this is why you're doing it so yeah that is the, the really the most important part of any mental um hurdle is understanding why you're doing it now why are you doing this why is this important to you because when the going gets tough and when the days get tough you don't want to work out you don't want to stick to your meal plan you have to know why you're making the sacrifices. So that's always where it really starts is why do you want this? Why is it important to you? Yeah, I want to strive for excellence, not perfection. Uh, perfection mm -hmm. is not realistic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that brings up something that we all sometimes get duped by uh, or tempted by. A lot of times we see these diet plans or weight loss plans or fads for quick results, what have you seen in uh, the lines of, you know, uh, scams, diet scams, and, and why are they harmful or dangerous? There's so many scams out there and it's absolutely terrible that we have to deal with them, but there's really no punishment for people that put them out there and they can make as much money as they want with their scams and not really even get a slap on the wrist these days. And so there's no, nothing stopping them from doing it. And then unfortunately we are at our point where we want results so bad and we're noticing the scams in the first place. Um, you know, even the smartest person's judgment can be clouded when you want results that bad. And there unfortunately is no shortage of people who will take advantage of that. And so you have to be able to talk yourself through that. Um, but the biggest thing I, I would say, I, I never use a before and after picture on my testimonials. I mean, I'd rather hear from the person what they've gained, what has changed in their life. What do you have now that you didn't have before you start getting in shape? Cause when you, it just goes along with the scam of before and after pictures, because it's also misleading because you, you just shows the before and the after, and it makes it seem like it's easy to get there and you just have to follow this and you'll get there. And what it doesn't show is all the hard work that happened in the middle. 
it's not going to be a smooth sailing road. You, you're, you're not going to want to just focus on the finish line. You're going to want to focus on all the changes you're going to get, all the things you're going to gain on the way there. And that's how you can make that long journey. Yeah. And I think of some of the scams being, you know, the supplements, the drugs. So many people are tempted to get on hormones for a faster growth. Um, you know, on TV, we see medications that are used to lower your A1C and everyone goes from being oversized to skinny in no time, but they're losing muscle. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're losing the wrong kind of weight. They're damaging themselves. It's a dangerous business and there's no penalties. Yeah, there's, I mean, around, I, it seems like for the past couple of years, if you listen to commercials on the radio, you would think that just about everybody over 40 has low testosterone. As soon as they turn 40, you must have low testosterone because that's what it sounds like when you do the radio. And actually, you know, the biggest, more than any supplement, all you need to do is start exercising. Movement is the best medicine for most problems that we have. Increasing your activity, getting on an exercise, starting eating healthier, getting better rest, those basic things that, that you probably aren't doing. Um, would do wonders for you. Most people don't have low testosterone. They don't move as much as they used to. They have lower energy than they used to because they don't exercise. They don't move. <laughs> but, low uh, low but, inspiration. Yeah, maybe. We're targets now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it is tempting for me. You know, I'm 57 now mm -hmm. and I, I notice a decrease in my energy levels, but it's probably mm -hmm. my lifestyle that has changed, that has decreased my activity levels, which lowers hormones. Uh, and you know, when you get in that pattern, sure, you're, you're going to lose strength and size. Um, it's funny. I recently pickleball is the new thing for me and my wife. We play, you know, three or four times a week. I feel like I'm actually getting back in shape a little bit, but I want to get back to the gym and get back to some of the strength training and fill in some of the gaps that's missing in my, um, fitness routine. Do you have any tricks that would maybe uh, help convince me to make that a habit? Yeah. Well, you know, there's a saying like the heaviest weight in the gym is the front door. And so it, just getting started with it. I mean, it doesn't matter what fitness level you're at. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Um, getting started is the hard part. So first, just to recognize that it, it's not nothing, nothing on you that you're being lazy or you're just haven't wanted it bad enough yet. It's just that getting started is the hardest part. And the farther you're away from it, the harder it is too. But I would also just say, um, and any listener. So what I do with, I have a fitness app called the fitness pivot that anyone can find. Basically it, the fitness pivot being that, you know, when plan a no longer fits, we, we got to pivot to plan B. And I think as life goes on, the way fitness fits in our life is different. And we struggle with this. And so this is why people can't get past the I'm too busy excuse is because when we're ready to work out and we're ready to get in shape again, we first think of the last time we realized we were in great shape. And we th think of what we did in our workouts. We think of what we did in our nutrition. We think of everything we did then. And that becomes the bar. Doing anything less than that is not doing enough. And we have to take that way of thinking and throw it away because doing less does not make it less of a priority. All it means is it fits differently in your life right now. It's like, I cannot work out like I did when I first became a trainer. I was brand new to the city and I was a brand new trainer. I didn't have a lot of clients yet. I lived right behind the gym. Uh, I, and so I had all this free time. I worked out two hours a day, every day, and uh, I was in great shape, but now um, I'm married. I have a family. I, I have an online business. I have a business in person. I'm a studio owner. I do, I do all these different things. It would not fit in my life to work out like I did then. And if I tried to force it, all the other priorities in my life, my family, my relationships, my work, everything else would suffer. And so it fits. It doesn't mean I can't achieve the same goals. It just means my programming, my fitness fits differently. And there's one thing that I know is absolutely true. If you try to force it, it won't stay very long. What you do for fitness has to fit in your life. If it doesn't fit, it won't be there very long. And that's how people get stuck on this inconsistency roller coaster of fitness just being in your life in spurts, but not really sticking around very long. I'm Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast to share this month's special at HaleyNutrition.com. Use the coupon code S2024. 
That's S2024. For $25 off your purchase of $200 or more, now through the end of September 2024. If you haven't tried the Aya Greens vegetable and fruit powder yet, you're missing out. Each scoop of powder has the antioxidant equivalent of more than 10 servings of fruits and vegetables. You're gonna love them, they taste great, you're gonna feel great, you're gonna be full of energy. Head over to HaleyNutrition.com and add a canister of greens to your cart today. Now back to the Dr. Haley Show podcast. Yeah, how much time a week do you think needs to be dedicated to fitness? Uh, I mean, you can get results with very little time, you know, so it's really just about how it fits in your life. I mean, someone could do 10 minutes, 10 minutes of resistance training three days a week and get results from it. There's tons of studies out there that prove that um, you don't have to do a, a, a ton of time doing something gets you results. So it's really just about, you know, figuring out how it fits in your life right now. And so there's a course I have on my app. I bring everyone to start with, and it's called the fitness reset. And I just take them through the questions that I think everyone needs to ask themselves when they're first getting started. You know, how does fitness fit in my life right now? How much accountability do I need to be successful right now? Cause that's also another thing that changes. You know, our motivation fluctuates throughout the course of the year. Sometimes I can hold myself accountable. I am in a workout zone. I can't wait for my next workout. I'm loving it. I'm empowered by it. And there's other times I need my trainer watching me do every rep because I don't want to be there. And you have to just know yourself. There's nothing wrong with getting help. There's nothing wrong with having someone else hold you accountable to something. And, you know, I feel like um, sometimes we think that that's cheating a little bit. But, you know, the more important something is to you, the more you should set yourself up for success. And so that is where the accountability comes in, whether it be a trainer or a buddy, a, a group, a, a workout class, whatever it is. What's your primary website? Um, makefitnessapriority.com. Make Fitness a Priority and the Fitness Pivot uh, is where you can find me. Okay, I'm at makefitnessapriority.com right now. There's a big blue button that says Fitness Reset. What's on the other side of that button? The other side of that button is my course, The Fitness Reset, basically where I have everyone start to figure out how fitness fits in their life. And so it's just going to ask them a couple questions. It'll help you look at your schedule, your life, all commitments that you have right now. So whether it be your work schedule, or it could also be your family schedule, or your things with your kids, things with your, with your significant other. Any priorities you already have, you'll write them down and then you'll take a look and see where does fitness fit. And then it'll also walk you through how much accountability you need to be successful. And it'll just, you'll take those two things and you'll figure out, okay, what does fitness look like right now? What should my workouts look like right now? How much time do I have for them? Things like that. I like it. And are you the accountability in that equation? Uh, yes, or well, I'm the accountability, but also I help uh, the person. The, the course itself kind of helps you set up some self-accountability as well. Uh, but yeah, this is a course that I have people start with, and I have my own online training courses too. Um, so fitness kind of looks different for everybody. And so my dad actually, I had to be a trainer for 10 years, I think, before my dad let uh, me train him. I've been doing it for 20 years now. But the reason he was so reluctant, because when he thought of personal training, for some reason, he thought of bodybuilding. And I think a lot yeah. of people do that. We have a perception of what fitness is and it's, it's a lot of times it's wrong because fitness is different for everybody. What's personal training for one person might be, maybe they're trying to be a professional athlete. And so obviously it's more on sports and performance and stuff, but other person might be, they want to be able to move without pain. They want to be able to have more flexibility. They want to have less back pain, things like that. And it could be anywhere in between. And so it's really what fitness looks like for that person. And so I have all different kinds of workouts, whether it be working out at home, working out at the gym, working out with just body weight, and then all different fitness levels as well. Yeah. You might be in your late nineties and you know, you might want to be able to button up your shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that could be fitness and, and, you know, doing, uh, being independent. Mm -hmm. Um, so for sure, different levels. Um, what's one of your favorite testimonials, someone that wasn't fit, came to you, needed a change. What did that look like? Oh man, that's tough. Cause I've, I've got a lot of them. My mom was one. She, uh, first, 
got into fitness and got activity in her life and just kind of turned everything around. She lost a lot of weight and she wasn't diabetic anymore in the end of it. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, several people who just, they could never find time for fitness because they just felt like they were too busy and I helped them figure out how to fit it in their life. And they end up becoming, you know, it overflowed into all areas of their life, be it being a better parent, being a better spouse, having more energy. Um, and I have some where, um, you know, they came to me and they, because they wanted to lose weight and that would be their vague answer. And actually I have them dig a little deeper. Um, I'd get to the root of it. And the person was always the picture taker in events with her friends because she didn't want to see herself in her swimsuit next to her friends. And then eventually, and, and after hitting her goal was so much more confident in herself and are always a person in the picture. And, uh, um, so that's a big thing. And so there's so many great testimonials, but I think with all of them, the common factor at all of them was it started by them having a very deep understanding of why they were getting started. And, and so I think that is the thing that's important when you get started is you have to know why you're doing it. And so I, I know I said that a lot, but it's when someone first asks you what your fitness goals are, normally your answer is vague. It's like, I want to lose weight or I want to get stronger. And you have to do the work to dig deeper and then dig deeper again, get to the root of it. Why is it really important? Why is it important you want to lose this weight? Why this much weight? Why is this important? And then when you start to really answer those questions, you have your fuel for all the ups and downs that you're going to face on your fitness journey. The common factor of all of my favorite testimonials is that they knew why they were doing it. I like it because if you don't have a why, what's the inspiration to continue? Mm-hmm. There's no reason to move forward. Why, why am I doing this? Why am I, it's, it takes time. It, it's effort. It, it yeah. hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just like anything that. and just like anything else in life, there's going to be days where you love it and there's going to be days when you don't like it, but you have to understand why you're still doing it. For sure. For sure. What, where are we going to find your book series? Uh, Make Fitness a Priority. You can find it on Amazon. You can also find it at uh, citybooks.com. I'm writing another book right now called The Fitness Pivot, and the Fitness Pivot app is actually available right now. And that, that is actually where I would direct people to, to go. I'll make sure they, they can get there from my website too. But the Fitness Pivot app, you can find it on Android app or Google, um, app or Android. Um, there's two goals I had with it. I wanted to first be able to help people figure out how fitness fits in their life. And so like I said already, if fitness doesn't fit, if what you're trying to do doesn't fit, it won't be there very long. And so you may get results, but they may not stay because it doesn't fit very well. Um, and so figuring out how fitness fits best in your life as your life changes. So, and, and so it's the changes in life that throw us off track, whether it be big, small, good or bad. Uh, get married, get divorced, get fired, get promoted. It doesn't matter. You have to adjust how fitness fits in your life when those things change. And, and the longer you wait to do that, the longer fitness is going to be out of your life, which means in my mind, you won't be able to show up as the best version of yourself for those things. So that's why it's important to bounce back quickly with what fits, but helping you figure out how fitness fits in your life. And then the second reason I has all of my content uh, over the last 20 years as a trainer, I have so many tips, interviews, workouts, you name it on there and just available to help people in their fitness journey. All right. I, I got my call to action out of this. I'm going to find the uh, fitness pivot app and identify my why <laughs> Yes. in getting back in shape. Is there anything else that you wish I had asked? <laughs> uh, well, one thing I always, uh, we kind of touched on a little bit earlier when it comes to fitness, there is a misconception out there that, um, has to be perfect, that you have to be perfect. And I think it stems mainly from the, what we get, the negativity we get from New Year's resolutions is why most people don't do New Year's resolutions anymore. It's been ruined. It could be such a positive thing, but everyone thinks you're doomed to failure. So why even try? Uh, don't be afraid to fail. And uh, no matter how good you do, how, how much you stick to your plan, how strict you are, how much willpower you have at the beginning, eventually you're going to fail. You're going to miss a workout. You're going to you know, have to go through the drive through or something um, because you didn't have food or you're just something's going to happen and you're going to have to deviate from your plan. You're going to fail one time and don't beat yourself up. It happens to everybody. You're not perfect. 
nobody in the world, no trainer, no fitness professional out there is perfect on this either. Everyone fails from time to time and a failing doesn't define you and it doesn't stop your fitness journey. What defines you is how you respond. It's what you do next that counts. That's what you need to be thinking every time you fall off track. How do I get back on track? How do I learn from this? How do I do better next time? I like it. Chad Austin, makefitnessapriority.com. All right. Any other resources we have to look up? I, I noticed you have a YouTube channel. I saw some uh, video demonstrations. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there, but it's all on the app too. The Fitness Pivot app, that's the best place. And it's my one-stop shop. All right. I'm going to download it today. Great. Chad, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. I hope you enjoyed that episode today on the Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, be sure to check out his YouTube channel where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.